Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be making the enemy uh, move towards the player. Very simple, very easy, we'll just need a new script. So I'll go to my scripts, I'll go ahead and create a new C Sharp script that will be called enemy. Let me just open up that. In here we'll need a few things but first let's set up the enemy. So the enemy that we have from before He's a bit tall, but uh, that doesn't matter really right now. We'll need to give him the enemy script, of course. We'll also go add component and we'll give him a nav mesh agent. Now, this we will use uh, for moving the enemy towards the player. But a nav mesh agent also needs a navigation mesh, a mesh that he will move on. And I can see that this is a bit too tall, so I'll just try and fix that. As I said, we need a nav mesh that the enemy will, will move on. So let's go to window, go to AI. They move this uh, before it was just navigation, but now you have to go AI and then navigation. And you'll get a new this new window that will let you bake a uh, nav mesh. Now, this is a bit tricky with our uh, map since we have a lot of objects in it and we don't want the enemy to be able to move over everything. So we'll go to into our environment and let's get the park first. So we have a, some paths and, paths and stuff. We want the player to move on that so we'll just select that and uh, we can go and set it to be navigation static and make it walkable. Now go bake. He'll be able to move on everything and on that. Now uh, if I go to path 2, select everything, uh, ma mark that as a navigation static walkable and then bake you'll see that it counts that in also. So basically what I gotta do is uh, go ahead and um, mark everything either as a walkable or uh, not walkable. So if you mark it as not walkable, for example this fountain and then bake, you'll see that the enemy will not be able to move near it or that close to it. So let's just go ahead and uh, take all these benches, go object set it as a static and not walkable and now we'll just go ahead and do that for most of uh, the objects obviously when when you have these uh, fences and uh, a lot of them you can just press uh, left click and then shift left click on the end and then just uh, do a lot of them at once now the stone groups I'm gonna set them as uh, walkable since those are the stones right here and they don't really um, stop the enemy from moving over them for example. So now I've done the park I'm going to go to sidewalks. Now the sidewalks I want them all to be walkable so I'll just go ahead select them set them to be walkable. Now this is going to take a while this is why it's very important to have uh, a organized project. This one is not that organized but uh, still better than uh, some projects that I've seen. Of course, this building ground thing behind, we don't really need to generate any mesh on that, so I'll just leave them as nothing, uh, because, well, nobody's gonna walk there. I'll just take the crossings right here and make them walkable. Now, if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to go bake and then just bake it. And yeah, it kinda did a good job, I think. Yeah, it did a pretty good job some of these are not um, some of the sidewalks didn't uh, haven't been marked so I'll just rebake and now they're walkable I'll just check around some stones fences around some stuff and it seems like it works pretty well I'm pretty sure that's it so now the enemy will be able to walk uh, around the blue stuff and he'll be able to chase the player. Now let's do some code. So in here we first need a variable that will represent our nav mesh agent. And if you just go ahead and type nav mesh, you'll get nothing. You have to go up here and say using unity engine dot AI, artificial intelligence. Now go nav mesh agent and this will be the agent. Now in void start, we'll just say um, agent equals to get component nav mesh agent and now every time the game starts or actually the object is instantiated 
the enemy will go ahead and um, set the agent in the script to be equal to this net mesh agent that we found on the enemy object. Now with that we can go to private void update. Now to keep this clean and tidy I'll just go ahead and create a private void find target and this is the function that will find us the player. For that we do need to go up here and say game object or actually we don't need a well yeah we'll get a game object. You can either get a game object or a transform, but I'll just keep it uh, as a game object. And I will name that target. Now, how do we get that? There's a few um, ways of doing it. You can make it public or a serialized field, but that will not help you if you instantiate them. So if you have a wave system that spawns enemies, enemies will be spawned without a target. Now a simple but not efficient way of doing it is just going target equals to game object dot find game object with tag then player. So we'll find the player but this is not very efficient and it takes out of your performance a lot especially if you have a lot of enemies um, because then the enemy has to go through all the objects through all the game objects in the scene to find this one. I'll keep it like this for now, but in the future we'll create some other ways of doing it. Let's go ahead and say nav or actually agent dot set destination. So basically this is a command to the nav mesh agent to set the destination obviously to the target dot transform dot position. So we get the position of the player and we set the agent's destination to that. And now I can just go find target and I kind of don't like the name find target because it's not really finding it. It's just going there. So I'll just select this and then you can right click if you're in visual studio and click rename. And now I think I will call it something like go to target and I will rename it everywhere. And now if I go ahead and uh, make sure that the player has a tag player because for some reason he doesn't. And now um, if we play the game, I think this should work. You can see the enemy right there and he's moving towards me. He's having a rough time, but uh, he is going. He's a bit slow and you can change his speed um, in the nav mesh agent component right here. Speed, let's set it to five maybe because it's a zombie, I guess they'd be fast. Depends what kind of zombies you want. And there he goes. Uh, he's a bit too fast for me, but uh, that's basically it. That's how you make the enemy uh, follow you. In the future episodes, we'll be adding some animations to this, because uh, right now he's just playing the idle animation and it do doesn't look cool. And we also want um, to be able to kill him. We also want him to uh, be able to kill us and we'll be doing that in the future episodes. If you enjoyed it, this helps you if you learn something new. Please leave a like, comment down below if you have any suggestions. You suggest this to your friends if they need help with this. If you got game dev friends, I don't so. You can also go follow me on social media, there's links to that in the description. And hopefully I'll see you next time, bye bye.